Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Mooma knows you are here. <laughs> Sounds like he thinks she does, despite your heart growing dark. There's nothing as powerful as a Mooma's love. <laughs> he understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the potato people. <laughs> the potato people, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. <laughs> you might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. The Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. The small tree you saw up there where you met will eventually grow into a tree of life and start giving back to nature. It'll be the heart of the land. You'll need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. <laughs> You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of Ki, the primal energy. <laughs> You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. They're hiding in the glitter grass that mostly grows deep inside damp caves, where they draw mineral from the natural rock. One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. But today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree.
Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Mooma will be able to protect us. You can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Mooma comes looking for you. You did good here today. No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the Tree of Life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the World Eaters arrived. The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse the Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land set the World Eater's DNA into overdrive. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mecton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. His friends have prepared something specific for each World Eater. The Mecton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Googlide are almost ready to ride. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the Tribe War and the situation with the World Eaters. You're getting the hang of it. Quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb.
wonder what oddness you could get up to now. Know that the tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see. be the world eater that chewed off out of date's leg. You'll need a hat trick to bring that down. The world eaters have made their marks on our world over time. That's not the first nor the last village it'll leave in its wake. Look, a survivor! Glad to see someone made it out alive. So Elena say so. He's heard the stories about the terror inflicted by the World Eaters to other enclaves, but never expected one to come all the way here. He worries there won't be much left to save if this continues, even if the Tree of Life survives the attack. He doesn't know what your connection is to this place, but something tells him you've stayed true to your heart. Anyway, he needs help and says it's by your actions you'll be judged, not by your intentions. He's grateful for that. You still seem to have a spark of light in you. Ah, that's a spark of light in you! That's 
right? Smack that spark out before it starts. You don't have to be so harsh. It's such a little spark. Oh, take it out now while it's small. Hmm. There's always another spark. <laughs> There's out of date again. He must have missed something important. Out of date knows you'll make a better stand against the world eaters with the support of a tribe, and there's two nearby. The Jackney tribe is likely to be your primary choice as they seek to become omnipresent and most importantly, feared. Regardless of who you choose, it won't be easy, as the conflict between the tribes is worse than ever, teetering on the brink of war. The Myriad's conviction to stop the World Eaters began when the Leviathans rose from the depths of the surf. Siding with the Myriad's movement for wholeness in a fragmented world might seem like the logical thing to do, but is it the right thing? One thing's certain, though. Destiny arrives all the same. The Jackney tribe only ever had one conviction, to bring balance to the world by wiping out the weak. They believe a cleansing is necessary to restore the world and want to let the world eaters bring down the tree of life. But siding with Chagney isn't necessarily a bad thing. Fate will find a way. Out of date says someone needs to break the stalemate and shift the balance of power to either Jagney's or Myriad's side. Loma Utolu Ba. He believes the tribe Sifus, Jagni especially, will listen to you and expects you to pay at least one of them a visit and play your part. In Jagni's case, letting the World Eaters bring down the Tree of Life is part of their plan. They believe a cleansing is the only way the world can be saved. He'll be waiting for you beneath the tree of life if you lose track of what you need to do. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. Another fork in the road. It's either the tunnel or the motor bridge. What'll it be? It's a bridge. Just get over it.
You're empty of key. Super effective. Better beware, that's a mump up ahead. They were hit hard by evolution, the wonky ones especially. Deformed and unfurred. You've got more than a flesh wound. You don't have the key energy for that. You've got nothing left.
That's the Myriad tribe's fortress. Will they be friends or foe? You should head up there. That way you'll know. Let's see. It's a beaten path to that door. If you go there, you'd better make an entrance. Says they're wary of strangers. They're at war. Says the Sifu is popular these days as the tribe grows stronger by the day. He suggests you let the Sifu do the talking when you meet. He prefers it that way. La fanen a ginkan man. Gerat na falo hutut mus. To guy la wute. Karat la wute. The myriad tribe act on understanding of the greater good and a code of honor. They believe uniting the tribes is the only way to restore the peace. The Sifu is convinced that defeating the World Eaters and saving the Tree of Life is the only way to make the world a better place. He welcomes you to the Myriad Fort and introduces himself as the tribe's Sifu. But he was hoping you'd show up. The news of a vigilante ronin on crusade crossing the Great Wall through the crack in Bunker 101 has preceded you. The wall that separates them from the other side? The wasteland you came from? He guesses the time spent there just left a blank space in your memory, as empty and barren as the wasteland itself. He's convinced you've returned for a reason, and is glad you chose to come here. There's something about your spirit that sparks memories of you as a kidling. He can still sense you're kind-hearted. The Sifu says sometimes one memory can make another come to life. He hasn't thought about your Muma for ages, even though she taught him a lot. He was one of the original Wang Fu disciples. Your Muma invented Wang Fu. Originally, it consisted of unarmed combat and the six weapons, the boomerang, the shuriken, the bow, the staff, the nanchuk, and the hook and chain. The Sifu says it's time to set the past aside, at least for now. Unrest is sweeping the land, and there are rivals in all directions. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. Says there has to be some dark so that light can prove its purity above it, and promises this will happen if you help them unite the tribes, defeat the world eaters, and save the tree of life. He could only hope for you to do that, and is thankful you know what's right. That's a sign of strength. The Sifu was waiting for something to tip the balance in their favor, and with you by their side, he's confident you can unite the other tribes. The one you should coerce first is the Jagni tribe. The Jagni tribe may believe that fear and hatred will lead them to domination. A vanquisition of the tribes and destruction of the Tree of Life won't be the restart they want. It's just an end to everything. Their kin have run out of options and found themselves backed into a corner. 
Even those who desire peace have been forced to prepare for war. Get out full of us in a hubble, get out in a file of hoot hoot. They might bring them war, but they'll never take away their inner peace. He wants you to focus. These are the new rival outposts your tribe needs to take control of. He says you'll regret not being on their side. The only way you'll learn their secrets, Wong Fu and the tribe weapon now, is if you defeat him. And that will never happen. Get out full of us in a hubble. Even though you don't share their values, they hope you'll lead with mercy. The outcome of this war is up to you. <laughs> Tells you not to be afraid. Your fate cannot be taken from you. Claim the rival outposts and earn the right to wield the tribe weapon. Once you've dealt with the rival's outposts, you'll challenge their Sifu to unite their tribe with yours and let your kin share land again. You were all part of the same tribe once, but without your Muma there as a guide, the disciples turned on each other and formed their own tribes. Seeing you brings back his memories of the old village. Myriad wants unity between the tribes. Their goal is understanding of the greater good and establishing a code of honor. He remembers your kind and unselfish soul, and can sense you still have it in you, the will to do good. Anyway, the memories you make with your family are strong, and can sometimes come to life. Passing the old village on your way to the first rival outpost might help. He can't blame you for not remembering, but he can sense the stillness of something lost.